So now you're looking at video never seen before. The King 5 investigators obtained this video and uncovered the truth about the nuclear near miss that happened a year ago. The federal government hired a contractor to remove radioactive material from a building near Harborview Medical Center. But the mission did not go as planned. King 5 investigator Chris Ingalls joins us live in Seattle to explain. Chris. Hello, Joyce. Yes, it's been 383 days, more than a year, since that leak here at the Harborview Research and Training Building. And this building is still closed, part of a multi-million dollar cleanup of radiation by the federal government. It was an accident the feds now say was preventable and nearly a disaster for downtown Seattle. Seattle Fire Department, what's the location of the problem? The contractor working on the job here last May didn't call for help when it was clear there was a radiation leak. We were doing uh, security for the uh, radiation detail. That's a Seattle police officer calling for hazmat. Four hours after radiation first spilled into the loading dock area of the Harborview Research and Training Building, right across the street from Harborview Medical Center. Unfortunately, as you know, uh, ionizing radiation is like COVID uh, virus. You cannot see it, you cannot smell it, so you don't know how fast it's spreading. Dr. Jacob Common is a radiation expert from Mount Sinai Health System in New York. On that fateful evening one year ago, a federal contractor was decommissioning a barrel-sized piece of medical equipment called an irradiator. Its beating heart is a capsule that contains a few ounces of cesium-137, the same nuclear material from the Chernobyl accident. If the source that was in Seattle was not shielded properly, and it would be at one foot away from me, it would give me enough radiation to kill me in about 10 to 11 hours. This never before broadcast video, released by the feds at King 5's request, shows the contractor's blunder. The cesium capsule is in this tube clamped under a cutting blade. Sparks fly when the saw pierces the tube as the contractor tries to cut the cesium from a separate pipe that it's mounted to. The contractors are outside a lead box called a mobile hot cell, which has been staged on the Harborview Research Building loading dock. They're using robotic arms to handle the cesium capsule and tools on the inside and are watching on a live video feed. We see these arms sort of grabbing the devices, grabbing the saw. What's going on there? Do you, do you know what that process is? Uh, uh, as I said, you cannot be close to it. That's why they use external hands without exposing this, uh, the workers. The contractor, International Isotopes, was unable to unscrew the cesium capsule from the holder pipe as planned. That's when the cutting started, something federal investigators later said was not permitted. It was an unfortunate incident. Uh, I'm not sure about why the contractor started cutting. This video shows the cuts that the contractor intended for the threads on the holding rod, but instead sliced into the sealed cesium capsule. The snow or bright spots that appear on the video is radiation interfering with the video signal. The contractor is unaware that this is the first evidence of a radiation leak. You say that the Seattle accident involved a very small amount of cesium. Yes. But what does this accident tell us about how dangerous this stuff is? So just imagine if a tiny fraction would do such a contamination in a building for a year. What would it do if it's used by a malicious purposes in downtown Seattle? Just try to imagine how bad would it be. Dr. Common is one of the leading voices calling for the removal of cesium from medical and research buildings across America. Irradiators shoot gamma rays to kill germs in blood, for example, for hospital use. But terrorists have eyed the cesium capsules for dirty bomb ingredients, so the Nuclear Security Administration has been quietly collecting and disposing of them, according to spokesman Greg Wolf. Since 2009, NSA has removed 350 cesium irradiators from across the country without any contamination as part of this important national security work. Ironically, that's exactly what was happening at Harborview. This was part of a federal program to remove three irradiators from University of Washington facilities. In this joint investigation, NSA took an unflinching look at the incident and concluded that it was preventable. It was largely a result of weak and partially implemented oversight processes. This just released investigation blames weak federal oversight for what it calls a near miss to a disaster.
It says the contractor chose mission completion over safe conduct, and there was no need to cut these pipes at all. They could have been packed for disposal together. We left several messages with the contractor, International Isotopes of Idaho, but CEO Steve Laughlin never called us back. At the Harborview Research and Training Building, radiation entered the ventilation system and spread through the complex. One year and $9 million later, the building is still unusable, even though only a fraction of cesium contents leaked from that capsule. So it was unfortunate, but it was a wake up call for all of us. And we're back here live now again at the uh, Harborview Training Center. So we did ask the feds and Seattle's mayor whether is whether there's any threat from radiation outside of this building. Based on the information we have, there is no risk to the public that's in and around Harborview, nor any risk to any of the employees working there. And that would be our primary concern. So the feds say that there is routine testing going on here to make sure the radiation levels are low and that it is safe. And during this event, 13 people were actually contaminated on that night a year ago, but none of them, according to the University of Washington, which runs this research center, have any lasting injuries. I'm Chris Ingalls reporting live in Seattle. Joyce? Just incredible, Chris. So if they take irradiators out, is there something that they can actually replace them with? Actually, there is. That's kind of the pitch that the federal government makes, that they'll take these irradiators out and medical and research facilities can use x-ray machines, but not all of the medical community is as convinced that they work as well, so they have to kind of convince them that it's worth switching to x-ray. It is certainly more safer than the radiation as we've seen here. As that building behind you is still closed, clearly. Chris Ingalls, thanks so much.